Okay, exciting time of the year. Uh, first first week, game week's finally here. You know, when you go through when you go through uh, fall camp, you know it can be a grind. And uh, but our guys have handled it well. I think we've done a nice job pacing our team and 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 making it where when they get to game week, we're fresh, but yet we've got enough work. I think Coach Brown does a great job with that. But uh, this time of year is really exciting. You know, you see college football on TV and the opportunity for us to play in a huge game uh, in in Charlotte and the opportunity to play on a national stage is going to be a lot of fun. And I know our, our team's really excited about it. We, uh, you know, I think we've made progress. I think we've improved offensively. I think that's what you're looking for every day is to, is to go out and improve every day. And our guys have had that approach. Uh, they've done everything we've asked them to do. And uh, now it's time for us to narrow some things down and, and figure out exactly how we're going to uh, you know, attack South Carolina this weekend and, and hopefully a bunch of plays that we can execute at a high level. I think that's what you're looking for early in the season. You know, a lot of times first games, uh, you want to make sure your execution is, is at a high level and, and, and not trying to do too much and not trying to uh, put ourselves in position that we haven't been in in practice. I think that's really important that uh, allowing our team to play at a high level. You know, if we can practice things that we've done and and things that fit the team we're playing and we can execute those things at a higher level, I think that's the opportunity to score some points and, and play well on offense. So looking forward to this week, getting started tomorrow, really uh, kind of our first week, um, normal, normal first. That's a great song. Uh, normal first week. Oh, he didn't? Okay. Okay, I don't like it either then. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it if he don't like it. So, no, I'm, I'm – you know, all kidding aside, I just we're excited. Uh, tomorrow will be our, our first quote day of the week for for a game, and that's something I know our team's looking forward to. And and we've had some opportunities uh, because of preseason camp to to get a little bit of a head start. But really now it's time to focus on our opponent and uh, you know start this season. It's exciting and uh, looking forward to it. Questions. Do you have a good You know, I think so. I mean, we've been able to go through spring practice and you're still learning the names and learning the numbers and what our team might be good at or not. We had um, a lot of time in the summer to really evaluate spring practice and look at what we thought was good, what our, what our team's capable of doing. I think the key to playing good offense is building it around the strengths of your team. And that's something when you come in new, you have to learn and you have to figure out. and. And, uh, and, and, and then once you get into summer, you know, you try to hone in on some things and they have their, their, their own workouts and things to do, but you also now get a little time with them in the summer. And I thought we took advantage of that time. I think it's two hours a week, if I remember right, during the summer, we get to spend with them and really do some football stuff on the field, which is kind of new within the last couple of years. Uh, being a former high school coach, you got way more time in high school in the summer than you do in college with your players. So I think that's an advantage. And then as we move through fall camp, I think we narrowed some things down and, and trying to build the offense around the strengths of our team. And, and, and I think that's kind of what the, what, the, what the message is to our players. You know, let's execute the things that we think we can execute at a high level. Let's, let's run those things. Let's, uh, let's figure out who our playmakers are, which I feel like we're better in, in that area right now, and, and try to get those guys the ball as many times as we can. Given that Tennessee's Yeah. What is the challenge with Well, we, we're hopeful to hear something very soon, and, and uh, we'll see how that plays out. The one thing we have is, is a room full of guys that have played some. I think we've got some experience in that room. And Tez is a difference maker, we believe, for sure. But I think that room's pretty strong as well. And, and uh, you know, those guys are ready to step up, and, and they'll have a role anyway. So uh, I think for, for me, we're just trying to, to build the offense around uh, what, we're, what we're capable of doing, what we can be good at. And if Tez is there, that's even better. Jim, how often have you simulated this game, or at least the first quarter or so of this game in your head you know, since, since the schedule? Yeah, in my head, probably a lot. Um, you know, just trying to get us off to a good start. And, uh, you know, again, it goes back to that process of identifying what we, what we might be good at and, and, you know, how we can be successful early in a game. You know, these, these, these big games like this to, to start the year are always a lot of excitement. There is some anxiety, I think, sometimes with your players, you know, and you want to make sure that everybody's not too geeked up and too excited. I, you know, other places I've been, we've had some big openers, and uh, that was always a challenge. But at the end of the day, if you do the things your players are comfortable doing and that you've practiced and done, I think that's the, the key to success and playing well early. You know, the old saying that you make your best, your biggest improvements from week one to week two, some of that is because of anxiety of playing the first game of the year, and guys are excited. And, 
And, uh, you know, so we need to limit all the negative plays we can, which are self-inflicted wounds, you know, penalties, uh, loss yardage plays, sacks, turnovers. You know, that's our goal. That's all we're focusing on right now. And, and uh, you know, South Carolina's got a good football team. They're going to make some plays. We understand that. But we have to limit the self-inflicted wounds. And I think that's kind of where our focus has been. Well, it's moved fast. I really believe, you know, I was able to get here in December during bowl prep, which was, I think, a huge advantage because at least I got to know the players uh, and the guys that we have that are still here on staff. I think that was a huge advantage. But it, it seems like it's moved really fast. And, uh, and then now here we are talking about week one. So that's exciting. But, uh, yeah, it's been a blur somewhat. How much do you accommodate like, your play calling your mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a great question. You know, and watching some of the games the last few days that have been on, I mean, it's you know, you definitely know that there's less plays, right? I don't know if it's ten or I don't know if it's six or eight, whatever. Kind of, it's probably too small of a sample size to know yet. But I think what you do realize is that each drive maybe is is uh, more important than than the than you know before the clock rule, right? Each each opportunity. Uh, in the red zone maybe is more important. And it'll be interesting to see how it feel after the game. But I think there is a little bit of a sense of urgency that we know we're going to get less plays. Now, that can be a good thing, too, because if you can you know, run the ball effectively and, and, or control the clock, even with a short passing game or whatever it is you're, you're doing on offense, I think that's a huge advantage. You limit the number of opportunities the other team gets. And you know, the, the bottom line is we want to win the football game. That's what we're looking to. We're, you know, our staff, we're in this thing together. We're trying to do what's best for our team to win the football game. And, uh, but we'll see how that plays out. And it, it has been something I've thought about and really watched some games in the past few days to try to see if there was a huge difference. You know, uh, several years ago, um, I'd say back in 14, 15, that area, you know, it was how many times can we snap the ball and make the defense tired, right? And how many times and people were snapping the ball 90, sometimes 100 times in a game and you know sometimes you put your defense in a bad position when you do that so that's something we're definitely aware of but at the same time I don't know that you'll get those those same number of snaps uh, anymore so we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah I think you know every time I, Every year that I've coached high school or college, I mean, you, your, your quarterback's heavily involved in there. I don't want to call plays that the quarterback doesn't, want to, doesn't like, doesn't, doesn't feel good about. At the end of the day, if, if I like to play and think it's a good play, but he doesn't feel confident in the play or doesn't uh, feel great about seeing it, you know, sometimes they don't see things the same, then we throw that out. So I, every, every year I've ever coached, our quarterbacks have been involved. And uh, Drake's no different. Obviously, he's a really intelligent guy and, and uh, advanced in football knowledge and so forth. But at the end of the day, it's what, what is he comfortable with and can we execute that? When you say he's intelligent and advanced in football, where does that stand out when you see that in preparation? Where do I see what now? He's intelligent in football. Yeah, I think, I think understanding what the defense is trying to do with their either pressure or, or coverage, I think. He understands what concepts, you know, probably fit based on the coverage and, and things that we're going to see. And I think, you know, his opinion is, is very important, uh, just like any other quarterback I've had. But I think, you know, for him, you know, he's a football junkie and he studies the game. And, you know, is, you know if this team's a, a cover three team, what are, the, what are the plays that we have that are really good against cover three or quarters or man or whatever it is you're seeing each and every week? And, uh, I think we involve uh, all our quarterbacks heavily on that. And even some of the guys that are the backups, they're all really smart guys. And sometimes they'll have great ideas as well. But it's a collaborative effort for sure with our quarterbacks. Go ahead. Not, not really. I mean, you know, I was, that was two years ago. I was, I was at Troy. Nah, nothing really. I mean, I understand they played and saw, you know, the score and all that kind of stuff, but no, no really factor for me. Chip, with with the running game specifically, mm -hmm. like, what do you see that as a marriage of the Gus Malzahn and Art Browse systems? Like, do you, is that maybe an accurate way to describe what you guys are trying to do? And like. Like, you know, 
just how do you see this running game sort of working as compared to what UNC did last year? You know, I think run plays are, are run plays. Concepts are concept. You know, Gus Malzahn, he runs inside zone. So did the guys when, when Art was coaching. So I, I don't see it as being this system or that system. Um, I, again, I really and it really goes back to what our guys are capable of doing. You know, it, where are we? Where is our strengths up front with the five offensive linemen? Uh, are we a better uh, gap scheme team? Or are we a better zone scheme team? I think that comes into effect. You know, uh, the times I was with Gus at Auburn, in different places, we were a huge inside zone team. That's we were very little anything else. But but that was kind of what he hung his hat on, and, and I still does. And. Uh, you know, with Randy coming in and his experience uh, in that other system with Art and those guys that he's been with, I think, you know, they were an inside zone team as well with maybe a little twist on it, but they also ran a lot more gap schemes. So I think we have the ability to do both, okay, but it, each, each week they don't all fit. And that's kind of the challenge and the exciting part each and every week is figuring out what's the best way to run the football this week based on our personnel and, and the fronts and things we're seeing. So I, I can't tell you that it's going to be this or that. I just think it's going to fit our team. Do you think you, just to follow up, yeah. do you think you could be more downhill, uh, sort of north-south, just, just from a you know, comparative sense, like from a wide angle view? Um, I think we want to be for sure. I think that's something each team that, you know, uh, you know I got a, a daughter in college and, and she was always she would get on me, Dad, y'all ran the same play up the middle every time. And it really wasn't true, right? We were running some zone scheme, some gap scheme, but to an, the average person, it might look like that. Um, definitely, we want to have a downhill element, physical physical offense. That's what we're looking to do. At the same time, um, if, if you're not capable of doing that, then 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 we we won't we don't want to do that for sure. Uh, and and I will say, the four years coach has been here, we we've been good on offense. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel for sure. Uh, but again, it goes back. It's, it's, I know I keep saying it, but high school coach, college coach, it does, NFL, it doesn't matter. Like, let's build the offense around the strengths of our team, and we'll see how that plays out. We may think right now that this is what we're going to be good at, and then we start playing. And I've had this happen in my career several times. By the end of the season, you're like, wow, we wasn't even really running that early in the season or that, that scheme or that concept. By the end of the season, it's our best play. So I think there's still some of that to be said. And, uh, you know, we definitely want to have a physical edge, though, offensively up front as well as even the skill guys. And, and, and that's something that's really important to me. Jeff, uh, in regards to the, uh, the wide receiver room, uh, Kobe Pace was a player last year. Mm -hmm. His numbers went up, uh, I guess, in the games in which Josh Downs was able to play. I understand you all are prepping for his offer to be able to play. Right. But, you know, I think Kobe is a guy that, that uh, since even since I've been here, has improved route running wise. Um, we uh, give him the, uh, a lot of opportunities to make decisions on the move, which I think is something he's really improved on. He's worked extremely hard on catching the ball with his hands and not with his body, which I think you see that. He even did that in the games last year. But, but I thought in the spring that was one area he, he, he needed to improve, and he has. Uh, he's a veteran guy that's played some, like you mentioned earlier. Uh, you know, the goal for Lonnie and myself is to have, like, six guys that are capable of um, – of playing and rotating in. That's what coached all the time is talking about building depth with your blue group and the guys that are going to play. And so I think it's important. Like that, I'm sure there'll be times that we'll want certain guys in the game, depending on the game situation. But I trust Lonnie uh, tremendously that we'll have guys in there that can execute and play. And those are uh, uh, before the game talks we have, hey, this guy's going to play this many snaps or whatever. Or, now this guy's banged up. Now what do we do? Do we move a guy over and so forth? And Kobe's very versatile. He can play inside or outside. Uh, and I really like his competitiveness. He, he does a great job uh, competing for the ball when it's in the air. And I think he's continuing to, prog you know, to make progress and, and improve each and every day. Just real quick, you said uh, uh, him making decisions on the move something. Uh, if it's a if it's a choice concept or an option concept or an opportunity for him to decide based on coverage where he's going to run or what he's going to do that you know we have elements of that in the passing game which they've had here before I got here as well so uh, I think that's something that an area that that he's definitely a guy we trust a whole lot to make those good decisions. You guys, you, you mentioned it and Max mentioned about George Petway getting more work yeah. in the slot. Well, what are some of the things that he does well in slot? And, and can you kind mm -hmm. of run him in the slot sort of out of the back? Of it? So 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think George has a, a unique skill set in, in that he's played running back, so he's got the ability with a running back skill set to catch the ball as well in space. He's a natural pass catcher, I think. Um, he's probably a, a you know a guy that can play in space as well as any of our receivers. Also, you can hand him the ball uh, in a run in a run play as well. So uh, I think. The challenge each and every week is how do we use him? How does he fit that week? Some weeks may be better than others, uh, but I really like what he's doing because, and he's a smart kid, so he understands the passing game from the receiver standpoint as well as from the running back standpoint, which you know involves protections as well as route running. Sometimes we can free release him and let him run routes, but I like his, I like what I've seen out of him. Very, very athletic, uh, very, very sudden, quick change, uh, change of direction, and uh, has caught the ball really well too. With, with the talent like Bryson Nesbitt is, mm -hmm. just the length, stretching as the red zone, uh, the threat that he is in the red zone, and, and a veteran like Kamari Morales is, how has uh, John Poopenhaver distinguished himself in that group? That so much, that group has so much to offer, and those guys are so experienced and so good. Like, how has he become uh, mm -hmm. the number one dude uh, at that position? I don't know if he's number one or not. I, I, I know this. That room is very unique because they are all very versatile. They can line up in space. They can line up in the backfield. They can even attach their hand on the ground. And that's the versatility that you want in that position. If you look around the NFL or college football, the best tight ends, that's what they are. And I think, I think they all have um, similar skill sets. Uh, if you had to nail it down and say this guy – uh, is probably better at doing this or that. We can probably do that, and that's something we want to keep to ourselves, obviously, and get for game plan. But, you know, I think, I think they're all three veteran guys that have played a lot of snaps. That's important. That's huge, and especially early in the season. Uh, they're very versatile. They're very intelligent guys, and um, I think they all bring an element. And they're, and they're tough guys. I mean, Coach Kitchens is tough on them and, and makes those guys be physical each and every day, holds them to a high standard. And, and uh, I think that room is, uh, is very, very talented. I'm excited about it, watching them play. Could, just a follow-up. Follow uh, could you see yourselves possibly getting more creative with the tight ends if you don't have, like, a vertical thread like a Tez? Like, I mean, could you see – yeah, I don't know. Two guys are between the same time. Well, you know, I think that's definitely an option. But I will say again, like the receiver room we have, we have a lot of guys that have played some, and and uh, so and Tez is huge. We, I mean, I think the kid deserves to play, and we're excited that that hopefully will that that'll happen. You know, but at the at the end of the day, we do have some guys in that room that have played as well, and we have some guys that improved. So we'll see how the game plan plays out throughout the week, but. Uh, again, I, I love that tight end room and I love the receiver room and, you know, the challenge I think is, is what fits best each and every week. All right? All right. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Appreciate it.